Mike Madigan facing 22 counts against him, including racketeering and bribery, 106-page indictment from federal prosecutors. Madigan claims innocence. He's got a hearing coming up March 9th in Chicago federal court. Uh, it's expected he'll enter a a, a not guilty plea. Uh, he's maintained his innocence for uh, the past year and a half since the ComEd bribery scandal was revealed in the summer of 2020. And that's just one small element of the new federal indictment that was handed down against Madigan and his close confidant, Mike McClain. It is the WMAY Morning News Feed, 744 now, and you can chime in on this at 217-629-7970. Do you think he's actually going to see time behind bars if he's found guilty? And again, Madigan maintains his innocence. He ultimately says, and he's said this for, for months now, that um, the the government's trying to uh, criminalize or those others who question his his behavior are trying to criminalize uh, standard constituent services. And he says that standard constituent services getting jobs for people. But those jobs, according to the allegations, even way back uh, in the, in November of uh, 2020, uh, where you had a house panel reveal some emails that indicated these jobs weren't, you know, you showing up with a strong work ethic and you working your tail off for that paycheck. No, these jobs were little to to do nothing jobs. Uh, and uh, these, of course, were uh, political patronage of sorts. And that's the allegation. Uh, but you've got a 10-year-long um, uh, revelation here that uh, federal prosecutors are lining out. And what's fascinating is the evidence and the depth and the 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 clarity that the federal indictment has and dates and phone calls and quotes and documents. Uh, so they've they've got a case here. They're going to be bringing and uh, next week we'll actually hear uh, exactly what happens in court uh, with this particular case against the longest serving House Speaker in U.S. history, Michael Madigan. He wasn't just the House Speaker. He had a nexus of power uh, that was uh, not seen anywhere else by being the House Speaker, controlling the political dollars for state House representatives, but also being the chairperson of the Democratic Party of Illinois, where he essentially controlled the political funds for those who were running for political office as Democrats and giving them money. And uh, you got to ask yourself how those funds ultimately were were generated, how those political contributions were ultimately generated to then uh, trickle out to the uh, other candidates that were running for office under the Democrat uh, flag. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how all this plays out. But one thing's clear. The investigation's far from over, and that was made clear by John Lausch. Now, uh, I've got a series of clips here for you. Uh, and we'll hear from uh, Governor J.B. Pritzker yesterday answering some questions. Uh, we'll also hear from uh, some Republicans and Democrats at the State House yesterday. Uh, but I wanted to start with uh, the, the, the U.S. attorney here, John Lausch. He is, uh, of course, a Trump holdover. He was uh, appointed by uh, former President Donald Trump. And uh, he he was kept on uh, because if you remember back in uh, 2021, U.S. Senator Dick Durbin uh, insisted that uh, Lausch is doing important investigations and he needs to be kept on. So uh, here's what uh, John Lausch had to say a bit uh, about the ongoing investigation and how long he plans on serving in the capacity as U.S. attorney for the Northern District of Illinois. You know, and I, I was here as an assistant U.S. attorney for a number of years before I had the great fortune of coming back in this job. Um, I think um, I think we all shake our heads sometimes when we think that there's another corruption case that, that's happening. It happens with other crimes as well. Um, um, and that's why I've, def I've you know, kind of defined our problem as a very stubborn one. You know, we follow the evidence where it leads. Sometimes we get there more quickly than we think. Other times it takes us longer. And I think, as you all know well, um, we're pretty thorough and deliberate in this in this shop. Yeah, I, I, I can't answer that. I serve at the pleasure of the president like every other U.S. attorney, and I'm honored to do so. So, again, John Lausch uh, saying he'll uh, stay on as long as the president allows him to, and there's more to investigate. Now, that message of that the investigation is not over uh, is ringing pretty clear at the Illinois State House, where you've got uh, uh, Republicans and Democrats uh, hearing these messages. Now, yesterday I was at the State House and I asked House Majority Leader Greg Harris for comment. He said, nah. I asked multiple Assistant Majority Leaders for comment. 
they all declined. Uh, but in this clip, you'll hear uh, State Representative Kelly Cassidy and State Representative LaShawn Ford. But we start the clip with um, uh, House Mi Minority Leader uh, Jim Durkin, who uh, on uh, Wednesday after the indictment uh, said there's a lot of things that uh, still is yet to fall here. Uh, and we're going to hear a lot more about it. So uh, here's uh, Jim Durkin. They could actually say that, you know what, we're no longer going to operate under the Madigan rules, which the speaker currently does have. We're no longer going to operate with his heavy hand, this iron fist on this process about stymieing and blocking the minority party from having participation or being engaged in any issue that is meaningful to the state of Illinois. This is their chance to change course and say that we're gonna move away from the way that Madigan and the current speaker have been running this chamber. The speaker is gone. Um, and you know, we are we have implemented some changes. We've, you know, given some more more some more powers to the legislative inspector general, maybe not um, enough yet. Um, but yes, we are in the midst of, of some significant change, and I'm grateful for that. There's always more we can do. I can't say who is who's left. But I think it's clear based on his statements that this is not over and that there will be f further charges against individuals uh, down the road. Well, one, I think that you, you look at it and you know that the feds are serious about rooting out um, corruption. And so that's number one. And um, I think that's what we all have to take from it, that if the Madigan um, could be taken down, I mean, everyone, um, better be careful of their dealings and um, as elected officials. So lawmakers continuing on today. They're in at nine uh, for the Illinois House. The Senate's been off this week, but the Illinois House back in at nine today before a uh, break for the weekend. Uh, but they're continuing on. And, and I was expecting some kind of uh, statement, like a reassurance of sorts uh, in the Illinois House yesterday. Uh, I did not see that. Uh, so the current speaker, uh, Emmanuel Chris Welch, uh, at least when I was monitoring and I haven't seen any updates, uh, did not address this issue openly on the House floor. Uh, and I was anticipating that to happen, but it, it, it just did not happen. Will it happen today? We shall see, uh, but we'll keep it posted there. Uh, Governor J.B. Pritzker being asked about this yesterday. Uh, of course, he was asked on Wednesday, uh, but it was before the actual, uh, the actual indictment came down. Uh, but the governor asked, uh, actually peppered with uh, several questions, and here's uh, his response to some of those. Um, on March 1st, I called to let him know that we would be making changes at the Illinois Arts Council. Only that I was asked to be a witness and that um, they wanted to talk about any interactions. Um, and I was happy to cooperate and answer all, any and all of their questions. I, I've answered all of them, in fact, and if you want more detail about what those questions were, I'd refer you to the U.S. Attorney's Office uh, for any additional information about that. Routine constituent services? Uh, not from any of the interactions that I had with him. Remember, I was governor, he was Speaker of the House, there was a Senate president, there were leaders across the General Assembly. I needed to work with all of them, and so none of the interactions that I had were uh, anything other than about you know, things to do with doing the right thing in government for the people. Do you ever remember a conversation where you were asked to find a position for Danny Solis? No. Uh, we've done a number of things that I think have made things better, but we've got much, much more to do. And it's clear from the, an indictment like this that, you know, our work is not done. So again, uh, it's Governor J.B. Pritzker answering some questions yesterday, um, and uh, we're going to hear a lot more about this. Uh, of course, next week, you've got the uh, the, the arraignment hearing. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Madigan actually shows up to that or if it's going to be a conference call of some sorts. Uh, so a lot more to come on this, especially as the investigation continues. And that indictment, 106 pages, there's dozens of unnamed individuals and businesses all throughout that. So uh, uh, much more to come. Uh, on that uh, very large sweeping corruption investigation here in Illinois.